The earth has a secret. It's broken. Cracked into giant moving slabs. Earthquakes here. Volcanoes there. Mountains rising somewhere else. It looks random, but it's not. It's a perfect pattern. A hidden network beneath our feet. Stick around because once you understand how this broken planet works, you'll never look at a map the same way again. We live on the cross Earth's thin outer skin. The cross and the very top of the mantle are stuck together as one hard layer. We call this the lithosphere, Earth's solid outer shell. And here's the idea that changed everything. The lithosphere isn't one whole piece. It's cracked. It's broken. Broken into what? Tectonic plates. A tectonic plate is a giant slab of this hard outer shell. Some plates are as big as continents. Others are the size of seas. They fit together like puzzle pieces, covering the whole planet. But these puzzle pieces aren't frozen in place. They're moving, slowly, quietly, just a few centimeters a year, about as fast as your fingernails grow. So what's powerful enough to move entire continents? Earth's heat. Deep below us, the mantle slowly churns. Hot rock rises, cool rock sinks, and this gentle motion drags the plates above. It's like a giant conveyor belt, running non-stop, forever reshaping the planet. And when these plates meet at their edges, the story of Earth's surface begins. But first, we need to know what plates are made of. Because not all plates are built the same. Some plates are made entirely of oceanic crust like the Pacific Plate. Others are a mix of oceanic and continental crust like the African Plate. This difference matters a lot. First, oceanic crust, the heavyweight. Oceanic crust is the seafloor. It's thin, dark, and dense made mostly of basalt. And here's a critical detail. It gets denser as it ages. New oceanic crust forms at mid-ocean ridges. It starts hot, light, and full of energy. But as it moves away, it cools, hardens, and sinks lower. Older oceanic crust sinks deeper into the mantle, creating the deepest places on Earth, the trenches. Because it's so dense, oceanic crust is always the one that sinks when it meets lighter crust. Always. And here's the twist. Oceanic crust doesn't last forever. Earth keeps recycling it. Old seafloor sinks, melts, and new crust forms again. A cycle that never stops. Next, continental crust, the lightweight. Continental crust is much thicker but far less dense. It's made of lighter rocks like granite. It floats higher, like a thick rock on the mantle. And unlike oceanic crust, continental crust doesn't get recycled. It's old, ancient, some pieces are billions of years old. Continents stick around. They grow, they carry Earth's history written in their rocks. This simple difference, heavy versus light, sinker versus floater, decides what happens when plates move. It explains where volcanoes form, why mountains rise, and why earthquakes shake the ground. Now let's follow the cross and see what happens when these giant slabs move. Let's start with the most dramatic move of all, when plates crash into each other. When oceanic crust meets continental crust, the heavy oceanic plate dives under the lighter continent. This sinking is called subduction. Subduction creates deep trenches, strong earthquakes, and melting rock below. Magma rises and builds long lines of coastal volcanoes. This collision also lifts the edge of the continent, building mountain ranges. A perfect example, South America. Heavy oceanic crust dives beneath the continent, lifting the Andes Mountains and feeding a chain of volcanoes. Now imagine two oceanic plates pushing toward each other. One is older, colder, denser, so it sinks first. This sinking plate triggers strong earthquakes, carves a deep sea trench, and the melting rock creates volcanoes that stack into curved island chains. That's how the Philippines, Japan, and Indonesia were born, in a fiery zone where oceanic crust keeps sinking and magma keeps rising. What if two continents run into each other? Neither one can sink, they're too light, too buoyant. So instead, they crunch together and crumple upward, 
forming the highest mountains on Earth. These collisions create some of the strongest earthquakes on Earth, but no volcanoes because nothing sinks deep enough to melt. The Himalayas, home to Mount Everest, are still rising today because the Indian and Eurasian plates continue to push together. But plates don't always crash. Sometimes they do the opposite. When plates pull apart, the crust thins, cracks, and creates a reef, a long valley where the ground begins to split. Over millions of years, that split can grow into a new sea and eventually a new ocean. This process allows magma to rise, creating long mountain chains hidden under the ocean, the mid-ocean ridges. Iceland is one of the few places where this ridge rises above the water. You can literally stand between two moving plates. Sometimes, plates don't crash, don't pull apart, they slide past each other. Here, plates grind past one another, they lock, pressure builds, and when the rock finally breaks, snap, a sudden, shallow earthquake. These quakes are fast and often destructive. They don't make mountains, volcanoes, or islands, just powerful shaking. The most famous example, the San Andreas Fault, where the Pacific Plate it slides past the North American Plate. And this isn't just theory. Once you understand these movements, the whole planet it starts to make sense. If you map every volcano on Earth, every tall mountain range, every earthquake epicenter, you'll notice something amazing. They form long belts that wrap around the planet. These belts trace where convergent, divergent, and transform movements happen. The different ways plate boundaries move. They show where the crust is pushed, pulled, or dragged sideways and why the planet's activity is never random. Look at the Pacific, mostly heavy oceanic crust. That's why its edges form the ring of fire. Look at North America, a continent facing heavy oceanic crust along its western edge. That endless push is why the Cascades and the Sierra Nevada rise along its side a line of mountains and volcanoes fed by sinking oceanic plate. Look at the Mediterranean region, cross from Africa, pushing into Europe, crumpling the land into the Alps, the Atlas Mountains, and a whole zone of quakes and famous volcanoes. These aren't random marks. They're the fingerprints of a moving planet. They're the patterns of Earth's shifting plate boundaries. So why this matters? This isn't just science trivia, it's survival. Billions of people live near volcanoes, on fault lines, or beside rising mountains. Knowing how plates interact helps us build safer homes, prepare for hazards, and respect the forces constantly shaping our world. Earth isn't still. It isn't silent. It's alive with motion, slow, steady, and full of stories. And now you know how to read its story.